in order to parameterize a line, we can kind of fo always follow the same technique. If we have two points on the line, so a point here and a point there, then we could always find the vector that goes in the direction of that line. We could make that longer or shorter by multiplying it by the parameter t. So when t is 0, the vector is, has no length, and when t is 1, the vector would have its full length. And then we can add that to a vector that would be our starting location. So this is the pattern that we can always follow to find our parameterization. A lot of times we call a parameterization that gives your location as a function of time. We usually name it bold r, um, r for, I think, radial distance, probably. So this is the a vector that would take you from the origin at any point in time and locate you in the, in the correct spot. So let's see that would, how that would go in this case. We have our point here is at 1, negative 3, 2. We want a segment that would go from there to the point 3, 5, negative 4. So our first step is to get that vector v. In this case, v, let's see, 3 minus 1 is 2. And to go from negative 3 to 5, 5 minus minus 3 is 8. So 2, 8. And negative 4 minus 2 would be negative 6. OK, so there's a vector. That's the vector that would carry you from the starting point to the ending point in one step. So you're going to take that vector, v, and multiply it by t, and then glue it to your starting point, which is 1, negative 3, and 2. So we get our parameterization here. Our location as a function of time is this. I'm just going to distribute that scalar t, so 2t, 8t, and negative 6t, plus 1, negative 3, 2. And combine those, we get, let's see, 2t plus 1, and 8t minus 3, and negative 6t plus 2. So we parameterize that. Now, we would want to put bounds on t. Let's have t start at 0 and end at 1. See, so if we plug in 0 here, we're at the point 1, negative 3, 2. If we plug in 1, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. Uh, 8 minus 3 is 5, and negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4, so we're at the ending point. If I let t go further back beyond 0, I'm just going to end up in places on the line back behind where I wanted to start. If I let t go, f go further into the future, I'm going to end up passing my ending point and going on. So if I don't put bounds on t, I'm going to get an infinite line here. If I say t is between negative infinity and infinity, I'll get an infinite line. If I put bounds on t, then, then I'll only get a segment. Right? I'll get a piece of that line from some starting point determined by the value of t at its starting value and to some ending point determined by the value of t at the ending time. So we could say individually, then, your x-coordinate as a function of t is 2t plus 1. Your y-coordinate, that's looking at this vector, that's 8t minus 3. And your z-coordinate is negative 6t plus 2, t between 0 and 1. We've got our parametric equations. Notice the idea was to take a vector that lies along the line, multiply it by t. That's just a, that's your, your parameter, which is a scalar that makes it longer and shorter. So that just makes a vector that's longer or shorter in the direction you want to go. And then you just push it out to make sure that it goes through your starting point, which we're calling r naught. So this basic pattern will always get you your parameterization. Okay, You really could use any vector as long as it lies along the line. And any point on, on the segment, it would just affect what the bounds of t would have to be. So this is just one way to do it.